But could there be trouble to come? When the economic crisis hit the Eurozone in 2008, member states found themselves locked into the interest rates set by the European Central Bank and deprived of using monetary tools they would have been able to use prior to joining the Euro. Ireland had enjoyed a massive property boom, boosted by low interest rates across Europe. These may have been appropriate for countries like Germany, but in places like Ireland, which had high economic growth anyway, they fueled the boom. As a result, the Celtic Tiger had further to fall when crisis hit. Public and private debt shot up. The two instruments a country could have used to mitigate a bust, a hike in interest rates or a devaluation of their currency, weren't available to the Irish Central Bank. Michael Pettis worked on Wall Street for 14 years before moving to China to teach finance in this emerging economy. He argues that the euro hasn't been tested yet. Historically, currency unions, when they do well, always do well during periods of massive liquidity expansion, like we've experienced in the last 10 to 20 years. But not a single one of them has survived the end of the liquidity expansion, the period of liquidity contraction. We are now entering into the period of liquidity contraction, and now we will see whether the euro is even capable of surviving. Um, and again, I'm fairly skeptical, but, but who knows? But the one thing that I would say is that if Europe has so much trouble with the single currency, the idea that the world can function with a single currency, to me, is, um, is, is a total pipe dream. There is simply no way. In the absence of a world currency, the US dollar has filled the vacuum by becoming a de facto global reserve currency. America's superpower status and long history of stable economic growth inspire confidence in her currency. Paul Volcker used to run America's central bank, the Federal Reserve, under Presidents Carter and Reagan. He now advises President Obama. Without a global currency in any official sense, we have the dollar serving as a, in a way, a substitute uh, global currency. It's, it's convenient, it's widely usable, it's uh, relatively stable in an unstable world. And so countries naturally gravitate toward holding the dollar and businesses use the dollar for international trade. Without the dollar, I'm afraid it wouldn't work at all. The irony is that the dollar's status as the leading global reserve currency, earned by its safe, reliable image, encouraged American behavior that undermined the dollar's very value. The demand for dollars overseas kept interest rates low and helped create a consumption boom in the US. The Americans' affluent lifestyle has been paid for by easy credit and cheap imported goods. For years, American consumers and the American government have been living beyond their means and running up a huge trade deficit. As long as uh, financial institutions were willing to fund this increase in debt, Americans could do this for a long, long time. But I think the 2007-2008 crisis has marked the end of that period. Um, Americans are no longer willing or able to continue running large trade deficits. Hello, everybody. Please have a seat. Good evening. There are no quick fixes, and there are no silver bullets. That's why we've put in place a comprehensive strategy designed to attack this crisis on all fronts. President Obama responded to the 2008 crisis with a $787 billion rescue package intended to protect American jobs and stimulate growth. Thank you, everybody. This action raises the question, can U.S. government policy serve both the interests of American citizens and those of their trading partners who use the dollar in their reserves. Xiao Gong is an expert on the Chinese-American trade relationship and monetary policy. Countries like the United States, you know, they, they, uh, they are independent, sovereign country. They have their own objective, uh, for example, to protect American interests. Uh, but they are also a reserve currency country. Uh, so uh, there will be some conflicts, you know, in the role. If any country is nervous about the dollar, it's China. At more than two trillion, they have the largest holding of dollar reserves in the world. 
China's entire economic growth model has been based on manufacturing for export. In order to keep exports cheap for Americans, they have fixed their currency, the renminbi, at a low rate against the dollar. And as well as accumulating a large trade surplus with America, Beijing owns almost $600 billion worth of US government bonds, ironically because they wanted to build up their foreign currency reserves should crisis hit. China can ill afford a slide in the value of the dollar. This foreign exchange reserve, it's a problem for China. And uh, if the reserves lose value, uh, the Chinese government were under tremendous pressure from its people. You know, people ask the question, how come you can uh, uh, lose so much value you know, in your foreign exchange reserves? So it is understandable uh, the Chinese authorities uh, are worried about it. The Chinese government have a tiger by the tail. They'd like to reduce their exposure to the dollar, but doing so could have a catastrophic effect on the value of their reserves. If China starts to reduce holding of US dollar uh, as its part of its reserve, it will send a very serious signal to the world. Uh, the US dollar is not safe. And if that happens, it's very much like a bank run. China is having to tread carefully. In the long term, they're lobbying for fundamental reform of the global reserve system. In the short term, they can play the PR card, reminding President Obama and his bankers in public that there is more at stake than American jobs. In March 2009, China's Premier Wen Jiabao spoke out about the threat of US policies to China's economy. Two weeks later, just ahead of a G20 summit to discuss the financial crisis, the governor of the People's Bank of China, Zhou Xiaochuan, went public on China's long-term plan. He published proposals that suggested replacing the dollar as the global reserve currency. President Obama rejected the idea. Uh, as far as confidence in the U.S. economy or the dollar, uh, I would just point out that uh, the dollar is extraordinarily strong right now. And the reason the dollar is strong right now is because investors consider the United States the strongest economy in the world and with the most stable political system in the world. But in a think tank meeting, Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner said that he had tremendous respect for Governor Joe. He's a really thoughtful uh, pragmatic guy, and he has a great record of credibility uh, in China as a whole. So anything he's, he, he's, he's um, thinking about deserves some consideration. The dollar slid against the euro within 10 minutes of news of Geithner's remarks. It recouped much of the losses 15 minutes later, when Geithner rushed to defend the dollar. It did create a stir in the markets because uh, people began to ask seriously, well, is this system that we've all become accustomed to starting to change.